Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, you've given us this opportunity today to come here, gather here as your people, one in our Lord Jesus Christ, coming together as the Church of Christ, as the body of Christ, to learn what we have to teach us, learn from your word, get a deeper understanding of your word. Because it is this understanding, Lord, that helps us stay focused on you. You want us to receive this understanding because that's when the seed of your word gets planted in our heart when we receive the understanding. Father, I thank you that you yourself open, our, you know, enlighten the eyes of our understanding to receive the seed of your word. Thank you, Father, that you're continuing to speak to us right now, revealing to us the deeper secrets, the deepest mysteries from your word. Thank you, Father, that you have opened our hearts and our minds to understand your word. What did not make sense before, Lord, you explain it to us, you reveal it to us in such beautiful ways that this seed, once sown in our heart, you yourself are teaching us to nurture it. Because you know the abundant house that it can produce, that it has the potential to produce. Thank you, Father, that you're speaking to us right now. Thank you that you're continuing to teach us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for taking control of this session. Thank you for taking control of our minds, of our tongues. Thank you for helping us pay deep, deep, deep attention to your word. Every word that is spoken, let it be yours, Lord, not us. I thank you, Father. I praise you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So, in the previous session, we were um, we were reflecting on uh, we, we we touched upon how we can have faith as well as unbelief at the same time. Correct. Have you any time considered that before, reflected on that before? I had not. Initially, when I had started uh, learning on faith, no, I did not. I did not consider it. I thought if I have faith, it means that I don't have doubt. I don't have unbelief because I thought faith pushes out that um, doubt or unbelief. Um, but then the Lord started teaching me that I can have both at the same time. And he started teaching me that because uh, I was digging, uh, I knew that I had to act in faith. I knew that I had to believe that whatever I have prayed for, I have um, already received it. But then I was not seeing the manifestation of it. I was not seeing it come to pass. Um, and the Lord taught me, taught me this, that even though I, I have faith, I also have unbelief at the same time. I also have doubt at the same time. And he and he very beautifully taught, taught it to me in the same scripture which told me what faith is. Faith is believing that whatever we have prayed for, we have already received it. In the same scripture, this is also there where uh, Jesus says, if, if I can read from Mark 11, uh, from KJV Okay, Mark 11 23 For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea First thing, shall not doubt in his heart. Second thing, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Now, 
we can ask why is jesus talking about both these things first he says if you do not doubt in your heart uh, but he says if you believe and they both the same thing believing isn't the same as not doubting in the heart correct hmm. correct so here jesus is asking us to believe and in, in different places he has said everything is possible anything is possible for the one who believes be it done to you according to your faith according to your belief and here he is pointing out two things first is he says you believe believe that whatever you have said it shall come to pass believe that whatever you have asked in prayer you have already received it but he is also drawing our attention to the other thing he says and shall not doubt in his heart and shall not doubt in his heart a lot of times we focus on the first part believing we have understood what believing is we have understood what faith is faith is seeing the unseen faith is believing the unseen faith is believing that whatever we have prayed for we have already received it faith is taking an action based on uh, the word of god based on the message that we have received because faith cannot just be in the mind faith has to be accompanied with an with an action only when there is an action can we say our faith is complete if if we if we say we have faith but we don't take any action based on it can we really say we have faith no we we cannot say if we say we believe something then we're going to take an action based on it a simple example is um uh, if i say it's going to rain today if i say it's going to rain today and you're supposed to leave from home you if you believe my word you're going to leave from home with an umbrella correct you that action of yours that you're leaving your home with an umbrella means that you have believed my word if you simply said i believe you but you have not left with an umbrella have you really believed me no only because you have believed me you have you have an action to show that you have an action to to back it up that action is leaving your house with with an umbrella so so is with with our faith if we say we have faith but we don't take an action based on it. if we if we say we believe but we don't take an action based on it we cannot really claim to be believing because believing always ends with an action believing uh, is always proved with an action and uh, uh, in the, in the letter of james james uh, 226 i think it says that uh, faith without actions is dead that means there has to be an action uh, backing of it based on based on what we are believing now we have understood that and we we take actions of faith yet we don't see things manifest yes um, now uh, many of you are ministering to um, so many people over calls personally in hospitals you go and minister to so many people even with them you you teach them to act in faith you teach them what faith is you teach them what believing is you teach them that they have to confess that whatever they are believing for it it's already done they have to act as if they are already healed for example yet they don't see the manifestation so many times it has it has happened to me the only the, the person who i was ministering ministering to um he was he, he was believing that he's already healed from a sickness and he was doing everything the confessions um praying in tongues uh hearing the teaching uh, online all the time he was doing all of that but yet he was not seeing the manifestation that he was not seeing the manifestation so he came back and asked me why why am i not seeing the manifestation and for a long time i did, i also did not have the answer so i started asking god god why is it happening he is acting in faith no he is acting in faith so why is he not seeing the manifestation of his healing it's not that you have not healed him you have healed him we know that we know that for, that's the truth that's the word of god says no you, whatever you have said in your word that cannot be false that cannot be a lie if you have said you were, he has been healed he has been healed that's the truth so why is it not manifesting in his physical body and for a long time i myself struggled with that because a lot of times i have also prayed and believed for things um one time i've seen the manifestation of it instantly another time it's been months that i have not i, I have not seen the manifestation um 
so i myself have question i am acting in faith um so why am i not seeing the manifestation again over there the thought the the, the mind went to am i not doing enough am i not doing something correctly am i not doing something correctly and um, i started going back to the basics um and this is one of the first scriptures that i had gotten the understanding of mark 11 22 23 24 25 when um when i had started listening initially uh when i had started studying the word initially uh these scriptures are one of the first scriptures along with uh, 1 peter 2 24 um that i had gotten the understanding of and after getting the understanding of that of, of what faith is of how jesus has already healed me of how he has taken my sickness on his body so that he gives his health to me i have seen the manifestation of my own healing but after one one and a half year when i was applying the same scripture acting according to the same scripture one uh, mark 11 prayer 23 24 i'm not seeing the manifestation the way i'm expecting it to that's when i started asking god god what is it and that's when he drew my attention to these two things where he is speaking very specifically first he's saying you shall not doubt in your heart but believe and in that he taught me we can have both at the same time we can have faith we can act in faith also but at the same time we can also have unbelief pulling us in an opposite direction see our faith um our faith moves us in the direction that god of god's will of god's will for our life of what god wants um us to experience his life his goodness his promise that he wants us to wants us to experience our faith moves us in that direction our faith draws us closer to that point uh, to that end goal of of the manifestation of his promise but if we are not taking care of the unbelief that we have of the doubt that we have then that unbelief that doubt becomes an opposite force pulling us in an opposite direction more like a paade jota kala ta pite version te eka direction an vata dog jan asta eka direction an vata dusra direction an aning dog paade lai le jala they are pulling in the opposite direction will they will anything get achieved nothing will get achieved because both are pulling in the opposite direction um that's what that's when god taught me that it is not you are having faith but at the same time you are so focused also on the situation your mind is so stayed on the situation um that you might think that you are operating in faith you are taking an action of uh belief an action of faith but your mind is still focused on the problem your mind is still focused on has it happened has it not happened why has it not happened when is it going to happen your mind is still focused on that not that it has already happened with your mouth you are confessing that it has already happened you are even saying thank you jesus that by your wounds i am healed example um thank you jesus that you have provided all my needs you are saying all of that with your mouth but in your mind you are still focused on i don't i am not yet seeing the manifestation of the promise that i am believing for your mind is still focused on that now that happens because our mind naturally goes to see it, it it was part of the fallen nature where our mind naturally went to things which take us away from god when sin entered our nature itself changed right and by our nature because of the sin nature that um, that we had we were pulled in a direction which took us away from god not towards god that is why david kept reminding himself uh, some 103 um uh, bless the lord oh my soul bless his holy name uh, always remember his benefits do not forget his benefits why is he reminding himself that is because he realized that he needs to train his mind to stay on the lord otherwise because of his fallen nature his mind is naturally inclined to go towards uh, go in a direction which takes him away from god away from god uh, that was part of the fallen nature that is why renewing of the mind becomes so important 
you you take a child itself you would have heard this example before you take a child uh, and uh, when the child is small one two years old all the time he's spending with his mama or dad okay and then suddenly one day a, a cousin comes and mama or dad hold the cousin what the child feels the child starts crying right why is the child starting to cry he starts feeling jealous or he starts feeling i don't know he or she starts feeling uh, maybe my mama dada is uh, uh, got another baby now i'm not going to get attention yeah it could be so many things no how is the child uh, thinking all these things has a child learned all these things has anybody trained the child all these things no it was because of that uh, fallen nature because the renewal of the mind has not yet happened the mind naturally goes in a direction which takes us away from god which takes us away from god um which takes us away not necessarily towards sin but the child does not know that uh, uh it's a sin the the the, the jealousy that uh, the child is feeling the envy that the child is feeling he, he does not know but it is the nature that takes him away sometimes it's not even um, a sin that our mind goes to the mind could just naturally go towards the physical things that we have to take care of all of the finances all of the bills that we have to pay all of the food that we have to cook all of the the the, the, uh, the we have to provide for our family we have to work towards our career all of that those are all natural things they are not bad in themselves we are supposed to god has asked us to provide for our family god has asked us to take care of um uh uh our family It, that in itself is not a sin but uh if we are giving that more value than what god's word says and that becomes a sin because our, our, if, uh, if we are giving more value to um just providing for ourselves and our family uh and ignoring god uh, in in that bargain then that is not god's will for us and that is not god's will for us then we are so consumed with providing for our family it is right we are supposed to provide but no thing no god uh, in in the bargain in the bargain because without him how do we even have the ability to provide for our families then we start struggling then we start taking wrong decisions then we start reacting based on what the situation provides uh when what situation is put uh in front of us instead of relying on god so even a natural mind could it, it's not necessary that a natural mind goes towards what is sin only it could just go towards all these responsibilities that keep pulling uh at us uh, keep drawing our attention because a natural mind it's 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 the natural mind one side we have the spiritual world one side we have the physical world a lot of times our mind is so consumed so focused only on the physical that we forget the spiritual and that's not how god wants us to live especially today we saw that happening in the in the old testament where people were looking at the natural and uh, making taking actions taking action taking actions based on what uh, what is happening in the natural but there would be one person moses looking at the spiritual and taking his actions decisions based on the word of god there would be a whole group of people thousands of them only looking at the natural and reacting according to it but there would be one person who would uh, look at what god said in that situation and base his action on that moses is uh, if we take the example of moses only the whole uh, group of israelites they come out of egypt and when they start seeing a little discomfort they start grumbling they start complaining is that a reaction or a response it's a reaction because they're seeing a situation and then they immediately reacting to it grumbling complaining even asking to the point of uh, uh, why did you even bring us out of egypt to for us to die in the desert looking at the situation and reacting based on it but in that moses is doing the opposite moses is turning to god 
seeking God and saying, God, what, what do you want me to do in this situation? And then God speaks to Moses, gives him an instruction, and then Moses goes and does that. Then Moses goes and does that. When they see the sea uh, in front of them, impossible situation, right? How do you even cross the sea? How do you even cross the sea? The Israelites are looking at the sea and they're like, we're stuck now. The sea is in front of us. If we go into the sea, we are going to die. If we go back, the army is there behind us. We are going to get killed both ways. What are we going to do? Why did you bring us out? This is this why God brought us out. That's, what, that's how they are reacting, looking at the problem and reacting. But Moses is doing the opposite. Moses gets an instruction from God. Go, raise your rod, raise your staff and the sea will be parted does not even make sense to the uh, natural mind. Correct? But that response of Moses, response is acting according to the word of God. When Moses acted according to the word of God, did what, uh, did according to the instruction that uh, he had received from God, they ended up seeing the supernatural. It's the same principle. When we obey the word of God, we start seeing things working out supernaturally. To a natural mind, it's not going to make any sense. Even to Moses, it wouldn't have made any sense. How is this such a huge sea? How is it going to part if I simply raise my staff? How is it even possible? Had anybody seen anything like that before? No. Yet, when we obey that instruction, when we obey that instruction, we are opening the door for a supernatural manifestation, even though it might not make sense to us naturally. To our natural mind, it might not make any sense. Now, uh, to our natural mind, it also does not make sense when one person slaps you, you give them the other cheek. Does it make any sense? <laughs> Does not make any sense. What is our natural mind going to tell us? You, we were reflecting on this earlier. One person slaps you in one cheek, you slap, you give him two slaps back. Put him in his place. Who does he think he or she is? They can just come and abuse me like this and I don't say anything. That's what a natural mind is going to say. But why is Jesus asking us, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, you give the other cheek. Why is Jesus asking? He's saying, don't defend yourself. <laughs> no, that's not why Jesus, yes, if that happens, but that's not why Jesus is asking us to do that. He is, he is teaching us that he is our defender. He is our defender. When, um, when Saul was trying to kill David, David had ample opportunities to go back and kill Saul. He killed Saul, problem solved, right? But David does not do that. Does that mean David is weak? It does not mean David is weak. It does, it does not also mean that David cannot defend himself. He surely can. He had three opportunities to kill Saul. But he does not take those opportunities because he knows it is not the will of God. He knows he is not tasked to defend himself. God said he would be his defender. It's the same God that you and I have. It's the same God that you and I have. That's what Jesus is teaching us. You give the battle in my You don't take the battle in your own hands. You give the battle in my hands. I will defend you. That's the same thing he said to Abraham, right? I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. The curse comes by default. If anybody curses us, the children of God, a curse by default comes on that other person. But that does not mean we say, you curse me, no? Now there is a curse on you. There also Jesus teaches us, if somebody curses you, you bless them in return. Because a curse is coming by default. <coughs> Jesus is not telling us, you give it for that. He's saying, you don't be the judge. According to the law that I have spoken out of my own word, 
if somebody curses you there is a curse on that person by default but if there is a curse on that person that person is lost forever you even though that person is cursed you open your mouth you bless them bless your enemies do good to them even to us even even with us uh, if we were so what made you believe in jesus christ was it the fear of hell somebody told you that you are going to go hell if you don't believe in jesus and you said no 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 i don't want to go to hell so let me believe in jesus was it that a lot of times we we end up preaching that believe in jesus so that you don't go to hell it's it's like you accept jesus other it's the same thing that we say to our children don't do masti jesus will punish you you don't obey you, you don't listen to mama jesus is watching will punish you correct we say the same thing we try to uh, incite fear in our children um of jesus thinking that if we incite enough fear uh, we are going to change our actions but but that's not how god tells us to act he says you change your heart you give your life to jesus not because you fear going to hell but you experience the love of god the love of god changes people the kindness of god changes people romans 2:4 it is romans 2:4 says it is the kindness of god that leads people to repentance now if we if we if we take the example of mama daughter only yeah uh mother son mother daughter okay a lot of times you all would have seen the mother or the father keeps telling the child keep shouting at the child sometimes keep beating the child also does the child listen the child the child will even in front of mama dada they will pretend to listen but behind their back they will still go and do whatever they were doing they will only hide it from the parents does the fear of the parents change the child's action no it does not only the child only learns uh, to hide the actions from mama dada but even in that if they keep receiving the child let's say as they are growing up we see the actions we see them acting out in that we don't realize that the child is uh, seeking that love that acceptance in that moment when the child receives that love that acceptance the the child's action changes without even mama and dada having to tell the child that what you are doing is wrong what changes the child's actions the love that the child received from the mother or the father not the not the punishment the punishment only taught the child to hide the actions and that's what we were also doing right as long as somebody preached to us that uh, if if we do something wrong god is going to punish us we did the same things just that we we did not go and confess those things and we when we when we did not go and confess we said we it's, it's hidden from god but the moment we realized how much god loves us how much he has forgiven us already that he is not looking at um, our sins anymore uh, rather he is only looking at um, the life that he wants us to live with him that's what brought real change romans 2:4 says the kindness of god lead, god leads people to repentance not the fear of god the kindness of god leads people leads us to repentance so all of this to a natural mind it does not make make sense because again right from childhood we are taught to live by certain principles which are not according to the word of god yes yes or no seeing is believing correct that's what the world tells us but the bible teaches the complete opposite first you believe then you will see the world teaches us first you see then you believe if you can't see it don't believe that's what the world teaches us but the bible says first you believe then you will see it's complete opposite is a complete opposite you give thanks but the world will tell us why are you saying thanks first only first you receive it no wait have patience first you get it then you say thanks but then the bible tells us you give thanks first even before you have received it you you see it manifest in uh, 
the physical, you give thanks first itself. This happens because the world only considers the natural. The world is only concerned with the physical world, with this physical world that we are living in. It does not consider the spiritual world that, that also exists. It does not consider that. But the spiritual world is still there. The spiritual world is even more real than the physical world. Because what is there in the spiritual world, it's permanent. It's permanent. What is there in the physical, it keeps changing. It keeps changing. Our bodies, for example, keep changing. But our spirit, which is there in the spiritual world, is permanent. Our body dies and goes, but our spirit continues to live forever. What is there in the spirit is permanent. What is there in the physical is temporary. But because we have been trained from the childhood to only stay focused on the natural, it's, it comes from that training. We keep doing something uh, for so many years. Our mind gets trained to go in that direction um, uh, naturally, right? If we have been consistent in following the world system, Naturally, when the situation comes, our mind is going to go in uh, in the world's direction. In in in, to our thinking will go in the world's direction. We are not going to one day start seeing something randomly get up and then say, "From today, I'm going to see everything spiritually." No, it doesn't happen that way. There is a training that has to go. We have to keep training our mind. The renewing of the mind does not happen in one single day. Where we go to sleep with one mind. The next day, something supernatural happens and the next day we start, our mind is renewed completely, nothing of the world remains. No. Every day, we have to keep renewing our mind. If we do not keep renewing our mind, uh, then our mind is, it's, with its natural in instincts, it's going to go to the things of the natural. That's when unbelief comes. When even though we are seeing uh, we have faith, even though we are doing the confessions, even though we are praying in tongues, even though we are uh, hearing the teaching the whole day, our mind can still go to uh, the sickness that we have, um, to the problems in our families, to the lack that we have in terms of, let's say, finances, to uh, not just finances, the lack is not just in finances, it could be uh, a lack in love, a lack in peace, a lack in joy, uh, a lack in friends fellowship, all of that, our mind goes to that and, and it's drawn to that because again, we are not yet transformed, our mind is not yet transformed, our mind, mind is not yet renewed according to the word. The spirit is renewed. Uh, we, we, we are three parts, yes, spirit, soul and body. The spirit is completely made new, the spirit is brand new, the spirit, there is now there is uh, nothing wrong with the spirit. The spirit is renewed. The spirit is born again. But the mind and the body are still going a transformation. Uh, this is still undergoing a transformation. Um, and that happens every day, every single day. We are, until Even until our death, we are not going to reach a point where we are going to say, okay, my mind is now completely renewed. I don't have to renew my mind anymore. Even until the last day, we are going to have to keep doing that because the mind and our body are still um, uh, going through that transformation the spirit is done one third of us is completely brand new the other two parts uh, the soul and the body they are going through a transformation and as long as we are going through the transformation that is going to be that good to focus either on the natural or on the spiritual either on the natural or the spiritual. And we see that happening even in the apostles' lives, right? Um, before the Holy Spirit came, before they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, they kept falling and falling and falling because of this. Because of this. Because Je whatever Jesus was teaching them, he was teaching them of the spiritual. Even though he spoke of the parables, he's he spoke those parables relating to the spiritual, the, the, the unseen kingdom of God. The actions that he took were based on 
the spiritual not on the physical but he was able to do that because he had the he had the holy spirit in him but the apostles did not uh, were, had not gone through that transformation yet so whatever they did they were still drawn to the natural they were still drawn to the natural when they saw a crowd and the crowd did not have food their mind immediately went okay how much money did do we have there is probably more than 10000 people for those 10000 people we need so much money we need so much food they started doing all those calculations because the mind immediately went to the natural because the natural tells us to feed so many people you need money right even if you have to go buy food for them you have to pay for that food to pay you need money so how much money do you have in the natural it makes sense but in the same situation where the apostles are going by the natural same situation jesus is going by the supernatural jesus is going by the supernatural even in a storm the apostles are uh, the apostles are worried they are crying they are thinking what is going to happen how are we even going to come out of this storm they are operating in the natural they are looking at the natural they are thinking the actions the decisions are based on the natural but in the same storm jesus is walking on water in the same storm he speaks to the storm and the storm comes down but does that mean the storm did not affect jesus it's the same storm does not mean one side there were waves and wherever jesus went the storm sea was absolutely still first of all it is impossible to walk on water right storm or no storm it is impossible to walk on water yet when jesus speaks to the storm the storm obeys him because he is not um, he is not focused on uh, uh, what is happening in the natural he is his mind is only focused on what is true in the spiritual the storm that he is seeing in the physical it's temporary it can be there one moment the very next moment the sea can be absolutely still it's temporary but the authority that he has from the father that's permanent that's not going to change and he's operating by that authority not by the, the storm that he's seeing he's operating by the authority that he has received from the father the permanent authority did he have any evidence the physical evidence any stamp on on his hand which told him that he has the authority no the stamp was the holy spirit which he could not even see so he went by the unseen not allowing him that, that's what he he believed that whatever he said shall come to pass the fig tree that he spoke to that he cursed shall die the mountain that he spoke to shall uh come shall come down shall melt the sea the storm that he spoke to uh, obeys him and becomes still he believed that whatever he said shall come to pass not doubting in his heart not doubting in his heart that doubt comes when even though you have operated in faith your mind still goes to has it happened has it not happened why is it not happening when is it going to happen when a mind goes to all those questions that's an indication that there is doubt that there is unbelief we see that uh, in in matthew 17 um in matthew 17 where uh, in uh, in in so a boy possessed by a demon is brought to the apostles the disciples of jesus now jesus is on the mount of transfiguration he's having an absolutely wonderful time with his father and along with him peter james and john are there that was his inner circle uh, so he has taken peter james and john and uh, he's gone to the mount you know over there uh, god has revealed himself and um uh, where they have seen jesus transfigure and and they have fallen and worshiped god and they are stunned and while this is happening the apostles and the disciples who were there behind they are trying to cast a demon out of a boy and they are struggling and they are, they are seeing that they are commanding the demon and the, the demon is not leaving only 
the boy is going into a fit and uh, whatever they are commanding the the, the 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 authority that they are using against the demon it is not working and they are stunned by that here three apostles are stunned by the glory of god that they have seen when they saw jesus uh, transfigured and the others are stunned because they are saying the authority that we have is not working out and then jesus and the uh, and peter james and john they come down from the mount of transfiguration and they see this scene where um, the father has brought his son to the disciples and the disciples are uh, have not been successful they have not been able to cast out the demon so seeing jesus the father immediately runs um, to jesus and he says jesus i brought my son to your disciples to cast this demon out but they have not been able to do this they have not been able to do this um, so now if you can please cast this demon out of my boy and jesus is like if you can what do you mean if you can anything is possible for the one who believes anything is possible for the one who believes and you know what the father responds i believe help my unbelief that means the father realized in that moment that i was believing but i had doubt also at the same time i was believing that the demon out of my boy would be cast out but when i saw the demon not being cast out that's when doubt entered when the father saw the demon not being not leaving his son the disciples were commanding right but the demon had not left when the father saw that that's when He doubted. That's when doubt entered. That's when unbelief entered, and the father realized that the moment Jesus said, "If you believe, anything is possible for the one who believes," and he said, "I believe, but you help my unbelief. Help me overcome this unbelief." That means believing and unbelief, faith and unbelief, but there at the same time, the father had faith that. Uh, um, actually at that time also they were good this concept of faith also no was very new to them at that time because previously they had, they could not handle faith so there was never a revelation of um, faith to them there was no, they did not operate there was a revelation that's why people like abraham and moses and david and daniel they acted by faith the others were consumed by the natural so over here the father says i believe but you help my um unbelief and then jesus looks at his uh, disciples and he says why were you no he says how long should i be with you uh, and he takes the boy he rebukes the spirit the spirit still throws the boy in the fit but the spirit leaves leaves uh, the demon leaves the boy and the boy is delivered jesus saw the same thing the apostles commanded the boy fell into a fit they thought it's not working out jesus commanded even then the boy fell into a fit but jesus did not believe what he saw he knew that the authority that he has exercised the demon has to obey the demon has to obey him and the demon did the demon left the boy was delivered and seeing that the disciples were like jesus why could we not do it why could we not do it why could we not do it and that's when jesus says because of your unbelief the some bibles will say because of your lack of faith that's a, that's a misinterpretation jesus and i think it's there in only one bible where jesus says um, because of your lack of faith that's a misinterpretation because immediately jesus says even if you have faith as little as a mustard seed it is enough for you to move mountains so if he say if if one place he says it is because of your lack of faith immediately he says if you have faith as little as a mustard seed jesus would be contradicting himself it is true that if jesus said that um, even if you have faith as little as a mustard seed it is enough but what can stop that faith as little as a mustard seed from working is your unbelief 
The reason you were not able to cast the demon out is because of your unbelief. Not that you did not have enough faith. Because little bit of faith is enough for you to move mountains. It is your unbelief. It is your doubt that you allowed when you saw the situation. When your focus went from your authority, from went from your faith to the situation. That's when you allowed that unbelief. And that unbelief stopped you from seeing the manifestation. Faith and that unbelief existed at the same time. And that's what the father of the boy realized. That's what Jesus taught his disciples. So it is your unbelief. Not that you do not have enough faith. They had faith. That's why they were casting the demon. They were commanding the demon in the first place. Right? If they did not have faith, would they even command the demon? No. Without faith, they could not have taken that action. They had faith. That's why they were commanding that demon. But along with that faith, when they saw that what they were speaking was not happening, they got into unbelief. Now, we also confess uh, a lot of things. But when we see those things not happening in the time frame that we wanted to happen, do we also go into thinking, why has it not happened yet? I went into that kind of thinking. I was um, I was looking for a job and uh, long ago it was, I was, I, I was looking for a job and uh, I said, uh, uh, by Monday, I'm going to receive a job. And on Saturday, one interview came. And on Monday, I expected them to give me a confirmation that you have been selected. Monday did not happen. So I immediately went into thinking, uh, this did not work. This did not work. My mind immediately went to, this did not work. Because who set the timeline? God set the timeline or I set the timeline? God said, by Monday, you will get a job. God said, you have already received a job. Be thankful. But I said, by Monday, I will receive a job. Wrong understanding, right? And when it did not happen by Monday, which was by my own understanding, I had set that timeline. I started thinking, why has God not answered my prayer? What was that based on? A wrong understanding, a misinterpretation of the scripture. Why? Because my mind immediately went to the eyes. I wanted to see it in so and so timeline. It did not happen. I wanted it to work in so and so way. It did not happen. That means it is uh, uh, the word has not worked. I have to confess more. We had faith. But at the same time, because we allowed our mind to go to the situation, um, we allowed doubt and unbelief also. But the Bible is very clear. It, uh, it says you believe in your heart that whatever you have said, it shall come to pass. That's the law. That's the law. Whatever we say, we receive it. Whatever we say increases in our life. Whatever we say magnifies in our life. That's the law. But at the same time, if we allow doubt and unbelief, it's an opposite force pulling us uh, in an opposite direction. That's when we start feeling stuck. That's when we start questioning God. God, why have you not answered our prayer? It's not that God has not answered our prayer. From his side, he said it is finished. You keep on believing. You keep on believing. Now, uh, the same thing happened in uh, the case of Jairus. Where uh, Jairus came to Jesus because his daughter was not well. Uh, and the Bible says his daughter was at the point of death. And Jesus says, okay, let me come with you. Because Jairus was believing that when Jesus lays his hands on his daughter, the daughter will be made of her. As they are going, um, they get the news that the daughter has already passed away. The daughter has already passed away. Now, where would Jairus' mind naturally go? Daughter has already passed away. Now, what is death? Can she be raised from that? Now, before Jesus, there was, I do I'm not sure, but I don't think there was anybody raised from the dead. Either that or just one person who was raised from the dead in the whole Old Testament. So the people were not used to seeing people raised from the dead. So even Jairus, when he hears the news of his daughter, how does he even expect 
that she would be raised from the dead because they have not seen anybody raised from the dead before this but is it impossible jesus is thinking now she is dead what what am i going to do over there he says no he says to jairus you keep on believing you keep on believing that means he said don't allow unbelief don't allow doubt don't allow worry any place in your mind you keep on believing keep your mind on what you started on the faith that you started with you you started in faith now you keep on believing in faith you came to me in faith you believe that when i lay hands on your daughter your daughter will be made whole now even though the situation seems completely opposite to it the situation seems completely against you you keep on believing otherwise if jairus had to not do that if he had to not keep his mind stayed on what he was believing his mind would go to his daughter being there and his emotions would take over him in that mood because a father has just lost his only daughter at that moment his emotions would have overtaken it if he had allowed his mind to consider anything other than the word of god other than the word of jesus other than what he was believing for he did in that moment jairus did not allow doubt to enter into his mind naturally it must have not made any sense to him thought is already dead what are you even saying now keep on believing yet even in that even in that he kept believing even though it might have not made any sense to him in the natural what is who is natural minded he might have even uh, even thought now what is the use of keeping on believing she is already dead right yet he obeyed jesus for us also the situation might be completely uh, hopeless it might to, ma- to us also it might look like we have lost the battle lost the fight yet even in that when we keep believing we start seeing supernatural things happening just the way jairus did when jesus actually reached his house he said the daughter is not dead she is sleeping and then he goes and lifts her up by the hand and she gets up a dead child Jesus gives her his hand to her lifts her up and she gets up and she starts walking the result of Jairus keeping on believing not allowing doubt to come in that situation was a supernatural uh, uh raising of his daughter we have to have to guard ourselves against unbelief we have faith we are operating in belief but at the same time we have to keep unbelief also away we have to keep unbelief also away hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you. praise you jesus you. so how do we keep ourselves away from unbelief how do we resist unbelief if you look around if you look around if you look at the people around us if we look at uh, now we have access to look at people not just from goa we can look at people from other countries as well a few years ago people did not have uh, have that ability to know about somebody who uh, who is 20 countries away but today we can study the lives of people who are in let's say america also people who are in england people who are in australia people who are in africa also we can study their lives we can study the lives of people in our own communities yes and i'm not talking about uh, lives of people who are just living a natural life there will be so many people who are living a supernatural life a life of faith they're not living by sight but but living by faith we will have examples of, of people like that we will have examples of uh, people who have seen supernatural things happen they have uh, uh they have um 
actually lived the word acted on the word and through them god has done supernatural things i'm talking about those kind of people yeah can you think of anybody like that somebody through whom god has done supernatural things maybe be in their personal lives or through them touching the lives of so many other people can you think of somebody like that you can right i mean i'm i'm not asking for names but you can think of somebody like that correct now through them through them through them god has uh, revealed to us his power his glory okay what is glory in the first place what is glory in the first place shining face glory is shining face no again the okay, the reason i'm asking for these uh, the meaning of these words is because all of our life we have used these words without really knowing them you know there are so many words like that correct grace is one word like that grace comes in every prayer but we don't really know the meaning of grace blessing also is another word like that it comes in every prayer but we don't know the meaning mercy is another prayer uh, another word like that like that glory also is another word where we use it so often but we don't really know the meaning of it so according to you what is glory <laughs> glory is uh, magnificence or great beauty okay that's what that's what we find on the internet according to the word what do you think glory is spiritual glory is spiritual you are saying something is that god's presence honor and praise yaar ke mohi ma देवाची मोहिमा म्हणजे किती मग ट्रान्सलेशन दिता ब्रदर मिनिंग किती आहे दॅट इट सेल्फ इज नॉट ग्लोरी दॅट्स समटाइम्स दॅट्स अ वन ऑफ थिंग अ शायनिंग फेस इज नॉट एव्हरीबडी हॅज अ शायनिंग फेस राईट that means they are, they don't have god's glory in them they for significance <laughs> i don't want internet answers what will i do with internet answers glory means god's power manifest in the physical when god's power we see the manifestation of god's power that's when we say we have seen his glory when we when we see god's presence manifest in the physical that's when we we, we say uh, we have seen his glory when we have seen his power his presence manifest so glory is not a glow in the face sometimes there is a glow in the face but not every time right not every every time there are people in the bible who who came out shining yes that was um, a sign of the glory but not the glory itself um when was his friend his time with the lord uh, when he came out uh, the people could not look at him uh, that was a result of god's glory being revealed to him but the shining is not god's glory god's glory is his power his presence made manifest so when um let's have to take my example one day there was a sickness in my body the next day uh i'm completely healed my organs are completely restored how did that happen that manifestation it's it is god's glory in 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 my body one day i had sickness the very next day my organs are completely transformed that is god's glory manifested in my body so god's glory is his power his presence manifested that is god's uh, glory 
um, I'm thinking how I reached here. Thank you, Jesus. What was I saying before this? <laughs> okay, which scripture we were taking before this? <laughs> Boy possessed with the demon. Unbelief. Okay. Okay, praise Jesus. Okay, so glory is um, God's manifested power, God's manifested presence. Now, um, you and I can experience that glory. You and I can experience that glory. Uh, and you're supposed to, it. we are expected to experience that glory. Just the way the apostles did. Uh, after the day of the Pentecost, when they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the life that they saw after that was filled with God's glory being revealed to them. That's when they had, all the time they were having uh, God speaking to them, giving them instructions, very tangible instructions. Go to this place, talk to this person. Somebody else will get the instruction, you be in this place. Somebody else, repeater, will come and talk to you. They were, they were getting instructions like that, very loud, very, uh, very tangible um, instructions. And that's the kind of life that... Um, that's the kind of life that uh, um, the born-again believers were expected to live because that became a natural uh, life um, for them. We were talking about, uh, God, uh, I was asking you if you can think of somebody who, yeah, from that we had gone to glory. Uh, God revealing his glory to, uh, to or through different people. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us. Yeah, so I was asking you to think about uh, all these people because today if we reflect on their lives, we can see how God has revealed his glory in different ways. Yes, we can see how God has revealed his glory through healing of incurable diseases, people who are at the last stage um, of, of their sickness, people who uh, could not even, there was no hope that they could get out from the hospital bed. Or somebody who was in a wheelchair who had no hope of ever walking again because let's say their spine was crushed. God moved in their life and they experienced a supernatural healing. Somebody who was at the last stage of on, on the deathbed, they got out and they are now living an absolutely healthy life. Somebody who had met with an accident, their spine was crushed and they were in the wheelchair, could not, able, could not move their hands and their legs. Their spine is restored. Their backbone is restored, their legs are restored, all their bones, all their muscles, all their joints are restored and they start walking supernaturally. We have seen examples, we have seen testimonies of those kind of people. God has revealed His glory. Um, God has revealed His glory through these different miracles that we have seen. Um, yet, we can be blinded to all those things and still not see how great our God is. Two Corinthians, we were earlier in the previous session, we were reflecting on 2 Corinthians 4 4, right? Where um, a lot of times people who do not believe, it's because the God of this world has blinded their eyes. Now, the God is the God of this world. What is his weapon to blind us? To take our mind, to take our focus away from the supernatural, away from God, to the natural. With deception. To the natural. To, with, with lies, with deceptions. Lies. Are, uh, he takes our mind away from us. He blinds us to the supernatural. To the glory of God that has been revealed. It's not that God has not revealed his glory, right? It's not that God has revealed, it's not, it's not that God has not revealed his glory to us. He has made it manifest. Yet, a lot of times we don't um, see it or we neglect it because we are still blinded by the natural. We are still blinded by the natural. That's why a lot of times this doubt comes when, uh, when, we, when we worship and uh, whenever there is an anointing flowing and somebody lays hands on, on somebody and that person falls. 
immediately the mind goes is it planned goes on yes is it a team member only correct or no because the mind is not able to process the um the supernatural uh, just before this before a few days ago we concluded with a youth retreat in bangalore and over there um, um all of us were sharing how uh in different ways we experienced uh, uh the supernatural touch of god uh, and uh, in in experience in that i you know, there, the video is there on youtube some of you might have seen if you have not seen you can check it on the jclm info channel uh where um we 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 are some of us are sharing uh, the supernatural experiences that we have had um and uh, in my own experience what i was sharing was when i saw it happening right i try to make it make sense of it with my mind where if i if somebody is going and laying hands on somebody and that person is falling i wanted to know what are they saying in the ear what are they whispering how is that person falling i wanted to understand that then i saw some people crying and i was like why are you crying why are they crying what is happening um uh, and it took me a while to realize that i cannot understand this supernatural move of god where people are falling they're shivering they're shaking um um they are being slain and for 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 one or two hours they're just they're lying there uh, they're crying uncontrollably uh, they're not bothered about who is looking on them whether they are coming on camera or not initially i was trying to make sense of it but soon soon i realized i cannot make sense when the lord taught me through his word the natural mind does not understand the things of god the things of the spirit and when i when the lord taught me that i said that's correct i cannot understand this with my natural mind no matter how much i try if i could na- understand it with my natural mind it would not be supernatural right the very fact that it does not make sense to our natural mind that's what makes it supernatural because if it had to make sense to our natural mind it could not be supernatural but for a long time i was trying to control uh, i was trying to make sense of it with my mind with my natural mind i was seeing people fall i was seeing people cry i was seeing people shake and i was questioning why it is happening how it is happening soon i started experiencing the same during the anointing session somebody laid hands on me i felt i started crying and now i should be asking myself right why are you crying how did you fall what did that other person say and i myself did not have the explanation of why i am crying why i am crying even while crying and thinking why am i crying but i cannot control that crying but i know that it is the move of god delivering me from whatever is holding me back i don't know i don't know whatever is uh, i know i don't know everything that is happening in the spiritual right but god knows god can see it i don't know everything that is keeping me bound uh, in the spiritual but god knows when i allow him to move in my life that's when i see a supernatural deliverance happening i don't have to justify it i don't have to rationalize it i don't have to make sense of it yet when god moves there is a supernatural deliverance as long as i was trying to make sense of it with my mind i myself put a block i myself put a block some of us try to control it right because it does not make sense to us if we i also did in the beginning i said i'm not going to fall so i tried controlling i kept my feet firm even if i went i controlled because i did not want uh, to fall because i said okay well, i don't know how many people are seeing at me i don't know whether the camera is pointed at me with my own because i was trying to rationalize i put a block did god not want to move in my life of course he wanted to move in my life but because i was trying to rationalize it because i was drawn to the natural what are they saying how are they feeling when they fall what happens do they know they have fallen did it hurt when they fall 
with all the as long as my mind was stayed on the natural i myself put a block to seeing the glory of god but when i let go that i said i am not going to allow my mind to come in between i'm not going to doubt this i'm not going to um, uh, go by my senses whether i'm actually feeling the tingling in my hand or no whether i'm actually shaking or no i know that god is moving in my life i was believing but at the same time i was uh, unbelieving also i knew that something supernatural is happening i believed that but at the same time there was unbelief also supernatural is happening with everybody else i want to understand what is happening with everybody else that was my unbelief and that stopped me from experiencing it but the moment i let that go i said lord i don't want to uh, go by what my senses are telling me i don't want to go by my own uh, rational thinking that's when i actually experienced the supernatural earlier i was talking about groaning right a lot of the times you're not going to even understand uh, what is happening because we have never experienced something like that before how can we even make sense of it that's why it is the supernatural right why it's the supernatural it's not going to make sense and it does not have to it will make sense to moses when uh, he lifted the staff and the sea parted no but the job was done the israelites were delivered in the desert how are they even going to have food yet they believed and when they believed they were provided with supernatural food the manna did it make sense for david when he was 17 years old to go and face a giant who was trained in warfare it did not make sense yet he went and stood there and god worked through him it wasn't david's stone that killed goliath it was god's power that killed goliath did it make sense to goliath of course not but david was not focused on himself david was focused on he and he even said it in his words he did not say i am going to kill him he said my god who delivered me from the lion and the bear he is going to deliver this giant in my hands hallelujah thank you jesus this this uh, these examples these champions of faith that we see in the bible no they also went through moments of unbelief but they learned to overcome their senses they they learned to not let their senses dominate them dominate their thinking they did not they learned to not allow their senses to dominate their thinking they they, they train themselves uh, they train their mind to stay on the word of god on god's instruction no matter what happened no matter what is happening in the natural they train their mind to stay focused on the word of god and it comes to training and it comes to training because otherwise if uh, if 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 you have not gone through that training and god puts us um, we want promotion but if god promotes us without us having to without us having gone through that training will it be justified on god's part to give us that promotion how many of you are working in offices or have worked in offices yes is it justified when somebody a fresher who is, who has joined for one year only you have been there for uh, 15 years is it justified that that one year old fresher gets promoted to a manager it's not justified because that person has not gone through training right will they be able to handle that pressure that comes with that promotion not possible will they be able to handle the responsibilities that come with the promotion without having to go through that training impossible then they mess up things and they mess up things everybody who had to go through that training david had to go through that training moses had to go through that training even abraham had to go through that training where they had to learn to depend on god where they had to where they had to train their mind to stay focused on the word of god no matter what the situation is no matter what the situation is even jesus when he went through uh, went to the uh, wilderness for those 40 days fasting what was he learning he was learning to overcome his senses 
He fasted for what? To please God because it was Lent for 40 days. Why did he fast? Why did he fast? He fasted because through fasting, through fasting, we learn through fasting, we learn to keep our mind stayed on the word of God and not what our physical senses are telling us. Because when we fast, uh, we are not just depriving ourselves, we are not just cutting out food. If you're just cutting out food, then it is not really fasting. Fasting means we take the focus away from the spiritual food, uh, take the focus away from the physical food and put that focus on the spiritual food, which is the word of God. Fasting is a training exercise actually for our mind to stay focused on the word of God to such an extent that even what a physical body is screaming, what our physical senses are screaming and telling us, we ignore that and we say, I'm just going to be focused on the word of God. That is where the very first temptation that came to Jesus was, you have these stones, you're hungry, right? You have these stones, you are the son of God. Right? If you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread and eat. That's when Jesus' response was, I'm not bothered about what my physical senses are telling me. I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on the spiritual food that I'm eating. That's when he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So in different ways, even in our life, God has revealed his glory. Um, God has revealed his glory to us in many different ways. Many different ways. Yet as time goes by, if we don't keep meditating on that, if we don't keep remembering it, if we don't keep thinking about it, we're going to forget about it. We're going to forget about it. Have you not seen uh, the glory of God manifest in your life? Have you seen? Yes? When did you see last? No, oh, genuine person. <laughs> Sounds funny, but genuine person. <laughs> when did you see last? My job. Your job? Okay. How long ago was that? So, okay, one, two months ago. Okay, please start. And then long time ago, actually, this was like, the car was like, the car was like, it 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 was like, Praise God. Wait, that was that was a long time ago. 2017. So after three, four, seven years ago. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Recent, past. You know why I'm asking? Because this happened in 2017. Okay. Imagine 20 years pass. Imagine 20 years pass. And you have not thought about it. Is there a chance you'll forget about it? Never? You can recount every detail if you have not thought about it. It comes back sometimes. I have stories behind the stories coming back. I can't forget it. Yeah, but it comes back in the sense you going you, you go back and think about it, right? That's what I mean. If you don't go back and think about it, you'll forget, right? You'll forget. And you know, it was happening with me. Now um You'll see me uh, talk about my healing often. Uh, uh, you, you, you'll see me t uh, uh, telling my testimony in, in different ways, very often. Um, but up until six months ago, I had this question. I gave my testimony, you know. Why do we have to talk about it again and again? It's already there on YouTube. Why do I have to talk about it? Why I have to tell it again and again? That's what I realized because I had stopped thinking about it. I had stopped speaking about it. And one day I had to share it. I go to share it. 
the first time i shared the testimony i think it took more than an hour because at that time the details were fresh i knew exactly what had happened then i got into this thinking why do i have to share my testimony again and again um and i started focusing on all other teachings not that i had run away from god but i focused to started focusing on other teachings stop talking about my testimony and then one day i had to share it again the testimony got over within 15 minutes after that i realized that there are so many details that i did not talk about there are so many details that i skipped that's when i started reflecting and i and i and i spoke to uh, some of the team members and they said why should you stop uh sharing your testimony why should you stop your testimony is god's glory that you saw in your life why should you stop every time you speak about it, it's not going to be the same but every time you speak somebody is there who is touched by that testimony who needs to hear that testimony at that moment and every time this very thing happened whenever we have monthly retreats in ponda right every month now after that realization after i was uh, guided uh, to share my testimony i was encouraged to share my testimony as much as possible of course not just push it in wherever and whenever uh, whenever the lord inspires me to share i share not resist not uh, uh, not resist that voice of god asking me to share my testimony and every time i've shared it though we when we have this monthly retreats in in ponda at every retreat i've shared it in some form or manner and at every retreat somebody has come and told me that uh, this is the exact thing that i wanted to hear this is the exact thing that i wanted to hear that i needed to hear uh, and they have uh, and they have asked me questions based on it and it has opened uh, it has given me an opportunity to minister to them how with that uh, little, uh, little testimony of mine also which i shared god opened a, a door for me to go and minister to that person earlier was i myself putting a block by thinking i have already shared no people must have heard it on youtube why do i uh, uh share it again and again i was even thinking what these people will say i i don't have anything much to speak so i keep giving my testimony i honestly thought that why because my natural mind was making me think that that is that is the way we naturally work right we have said these things so many times how many times should more should be uh speak these things what god has done in our life we should first of all never stop thinking about it secondly So that was, first of all we should never stop thinking about it secondly we should never stop speaking about it because it is his glory that has been manifested in our life every time there is a purpose that god wants us to speak our testimony hallelujah hallelujah praise jesus and even in the bible god instructs his people it's 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 a it, it, He he instructs his people to set reminders of uh, what he has done. Um, because uh, I can I can think of an example where in Joshua four, so this is after the the people have come out of Egypt. Uh, Moses has died. Moses has passed away, and Joshua has taken over uh, uh, the leadership. Joshua has been made the leader of uh, the Israelites, and now they are the the old generation has passed away, and now with this new generation, Joshua is. Uh, ready to enter into the kingdom but uh, into the promised land but over there also when they have to enter there is a river in between um and they have to cross that river and god gives them instruction saying you keep walking you take the ark of the covenant uh, let the priests carry the ark of the covenant and let them walk but the minute they step into the river the river is going to dry the river is going to dry and that's exactly what happens as the priest step into the water with the ark of the covenant of the river dries and they cross the river on dry land but as a memorial of of this they set up stones in that place um where where the river where they had stepped in the river had dried they set up stones in that place as a memorial for them that this is what the lord had done 
so that later generations also as they as they are passing by they look at those stones and they think why were these stones why why are these stones there and that gives an opening to somebody to tell them this is what the lord had done they set up those god himself instructed them to set those stones over there it did not come from their own wisdom so that god wants us to remember all the things that he has uh, done why why is the bible given to us this is an account of everything that god has done for his people in which he has revealed his will his character his nature to us if this was not there how would we know what god has done in the life of abraham hallelujah, hallelujah. earlier earlier i don't know if, if if it still happens earlier we used to set up these uh, um uh memorial of a different kind maybe a structure uh with a with a plaque on it uh with, with some monuments um wherever we had seen the glory of god manifest yes so god wants us to remember what he has done but if we forget and we have to constantly train our mind to remember this otherwise our mind is going to forget our mind is going to go into everywhere everything else and forget what god has done because the mind is still going through a renewal process we will see a complete transformation we will see a full transformation when our mind is constantly being renewed by the word of god by the word of god and it's not just us see these principles um it might look like they are applying to us now no abraham had to go through the same process why was abraham why why did it take abraham 25 years to see the fulfillment of the promise because he also had to be trained uh, to keep on believing he also failed many times why did he fail because he was again uh, driven by his natural uh, uh, natural thinking uh, by by the way he rationalized things and he ended up acting uh, by his natural instincts by his flesh the bible uses the word flesh he had received the promise and god said you will you will bear a son through the wife sarah but sarah says to him are i am old you don't think god meant me so you go and try with my servant so he goes and lays with his servant and gets a son through sarah's servant was that the promised son that uh, that he was supposed to get no he went and did that because of his own understanding not by based on what god had told him he went and did that based on his own understanding that's why that son is called the son of the flesh and he, uh, god even um, says uh, god says the isaac the son born through the promise is your only son god acknowledges isaac as the only son because when god gives a command to abraham um, to go and sacrifice isaac he says take your only son he does not say take your first son take your second son he says take your only son because isaac is the only son that was born through the promise when abraham actually obeyed god he also had to go through that training to not allow his mind to come in between not allow unbelief to come in between because that unbelief is what would have hindered um, abraham and he did a lot of times he failed why because of his own way of thinking not by not going by what god had uh, instructed him to do but he going by his own um understanding and then each time god god had to bring him back to the correct path god had to bring him back to the correct path so that abraham continues to cooperate with him continues uh to believe continues in his faith and the promise is actually fulfilled hallelujah yeah. praise jesus yeah. thank you jesus the same kind of training we also have to go the same kind of training we also have to go through where for so long now uh, brother when did you start hearing the word like actually when Uh, it was like ten years ago. Okay, so te- I I don't want to ask your age, but before all that time, uh, what you learned in the last ten years, 
uh, is it different from what you had learned before that? No, no. The understanding that you received in the last ten years, you completely different, no? Completely different. So, what you had learned previously, all those years, not the last ten years, the years before that. Now, when you are learning the word, your actions. Sometimes you would have thought, this feels so odd to do this. Following the word, no, no, no. After in these last ten years, you would have over, you would have had to um, overcome that old thinking. No, no. Sometimes, sometimes you have to overcome that old thinking because now whatever you learned in the last ten years was it matching the your what you have what you knew in your youth? No, no, right? Uh, those were those, those thoughts were very different. Yeah. It's the same for all of us. Yes, it's the same for all of us. The moment we start learning from this rule, it is a completely different way of living. You were you, in Bana, you were blind, and and now you are completely healed. Praise God! Praise God! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This the, when we, the moment we start living according to the word, right? It's a completely different way of living. Completely different way of living goes exactly against the word. That's why the, the goes exactly against the word. That's why uh, the world cannot tolerate this. That's why we, we, you you come here often, no? All of you come here often, no? Is there no opposition? There is, yeah, there is no. I'm not see. I'm not saying those people are bad. I'm not saying those people are bad. But it's the system of the world. This the world cannot tolerate things which are according to the word. The moment you start living according to the word, the world is gonna rebel. The world is gonna oppose you. Even even Abraham had to go through the same. He said, "If they come to know, because of God's favor on me, they he uh, went and uh, asked his wife to live with the Pharaoh. He fell, but God taught him to make a correction, and he made the correction, and he made the correction. That's what is more important. Falling is falling is not important. We fall, but in that fall also, again we turn to God. We don't turn away from God. We turn to God, and that's where." God comes to help us. When we fall, we think now God is not going to help us, so we turn away from God. Has it not happened? When Adam fell, instead of going to God, he was filled with shame. He went away from God. Where should he have gone in the first place? To God. When we fall, when we make mistakes, don't we go away from God, thinking we are not worthy to be in God's presence? But God is saying, "No, I am the first place, the first person that you need to come to, because I am going to help you overcome. I am not looking at how many times you have fallen. What I am interested in, you have, you keep walking in the path that I am showing, because I have a plan for your life. I am not looking at how many times you fall. You get up, you keep walking with me. That's what God wants for our life, not for us to. God is not going to put us to shame." When we turn to him, he's not going to say, "You are a sinner. You don't deserve to be here." He's not going to put us to him. That's not what he's interested in. No matter how many times we fall, he says, "I'm not looking at your sin anymore." And this is so difficult for us to wrap our heads around because our natural, our natural senses are going to tell us, "You make a mistake. You need to be." You need to pay for it. You need to know that you have made a mistake. And we'll keep pointing out the mistakes of others. We'll do. I was doing all the time. Ask. <laughs> Praise God. But then God told. God taught me. How many mistakes have you done? I am not looking at even one of those. I have forgiven you completely. I have cast whatever sins you have committed. I am not interested in any of this. I have forgiven you once and for all. 
every single sin i've cast behind my back now when i look at you i don't look at your sins i don't see your sins now i see the blood that has cleansed you hallelujah i don't see your sins i see the blood of jesus that has cleansed you you are you are just as jesus to me that is in our spirit that is in our spirit and that is the love of god that leads us to repentance when we recognize this this leads us to god not the fear of hell not the fear of punishment this is what leads us to repentance does it make any sense to our natural mind no our natural mind says uh, you have made a mistake you should remember that mistake all your life with a spouse will keep doing that with a brother with a siblings will keep doing that yes everybody is laughing everybody has done that i think praise jesus but god says i don't remember your sins anymore that's the beauty of our god that's the beauty of god's love for us this is what brings people close to god not the fear of punishment not the fear of hell but the revelation of god's love how much god loves us hallelujah praise jesus thank you jesus but the enemy will try to blind us with lies with deceptions to take us away from this knowledge of god to take us away from god try and get us into unbelief so that that unbelief stops our faith that unbelief blocks our faith everything we, we we receive from god is by faith yes everything we receive from god is by faith faith is the only thing that pleases god faith is the only thing that pleases god but if we allow the enemy to um to divert our mind to to get our mind to focus on uh, the natural just the natural the enemy gets us into unbelief and that unbelief puts a block in our faith hallelujah hallelujah that's why it's so important that we guard our hearts against unbelief and we learn to do that there is there is a training that happens that's why that's why we have to be consistent every day in studying the word uh in in confessing the scriptures because when we do those things why it's it's it, now this is not a, again a ritual we do that so that our minds are transformed every day so the minds are renewed every day the purpose of confession the purpose of praying in tongues the purpose of reading the bible the purpose of preaching is not so that we do these rituals that we uh, that we can claim we spend time with god that we that we can claim uh, we we spend time in prayer it's, the, the goal is not that the goal is our minds are renewed when i received my healing i i i spent the whole day confessing the word why did i spend the whole day confessing the word not so that looking at that confession god heals me no i spent that whole day because my mind had to be renewed in the first place because before my healing all i was thinking about all i was talking about was i am sick i'm sick i'm sick i'm sick i was going and telling every single person that i'm sick so i had to renew my mind from i am sick so i am healed and to renew my mind i had to confess that word the whole day i had to pray in tongues the whole day so that my mind is transformed not so that now looking at my confession god moves on my behalf no our faith is not to make god do something for us our faith is the purpose of our faith is not to make god do something for us the purpose of our faith is our faith is a response to what god has already done faith is not going to make god move faith is our response to what god has already done hallelujah hallelujah praise jesus thank you jesus and you know what's the sure sure sign that our faith is from that there is no unbelief what's the sign that we are uh, our faith Uh, is strong and there is no unbelief yes absolutely yes yes rest peace because now um when our mind is completely renewed to uh, to the word of god that means our mind is now stayed on the word of god 
and according to the word of god isaiah 26 verse 23 or 33 it says god it says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you mind is stayed that means it's there it's stayed there it does not come go come go come go the mind is stayed on god is the person who will experience that peace of god is the person who will experience that peace of god you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you that means the mind is renewed the mind is no more thinking about the natural things that are bothering us what is happening in the natural things seemingly not working or not, uh, or, or, or or delayed the mind is not going on all those things but rather the mind is now focused on the word of god where we keep on believing not thinking of the situation not thinking uh, by our rational uh, uh, natural abilities but only stayed on the word of god hallelujah thank you jesus you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on god that means the 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 the, the sign will be will be addressed will not be agitated will not be thinking about when is it happening why is it happening the second is we will abound in thanksgiving it means we will abound in thanksgiving now is this a moment where is our mind stayed <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. I'm taking a pause because mine is still there. <laughs> Hallelujah. The second the second is we will abound in thanksgiving. We will abound in thanksgiving. Now both go together, you know. Uh, okay, if I say abound in thanksgiving, that means instead of going on praying, God give me this, God give me this, God give me this, our prayers will turn into thank you, God, that you have already given me this. Thank you, God, that you have already worked uh, on my behalf. Thank you, God, that you have already provided uh, what I have prayed for. Thank you, God, that you have already provided whatever, whatever I need. That's how all our confessions are. Thank you, Jesus, for sending. In the in the white book, I'm talking about most of our confessions are thank you, Jesus. They start with thank you, Jesus, right? Why? Why? Because um, when we are established in our faith, the Bible uses the words established in our faith. That means we have we 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 are standing firm in our faith. We are we are firm in our faith. The the result of that is we will abound in thanksgiving. Colossians two uh, seven. it says uh, when we are established in our faith we will abound in thanksgiving when we are standing firm in our faith not moved by the circumstances we will abound in thanksgiving the result of that will be thanksgiving now thanksgiving and that peace of god go together because in our mouth in our mouth we can keep giving thanks we can keep confessing uh, thank you jesus so and so thank you jesus so and so but if our mind is not stayed on god our words and our thinking our imagination is not going to match it's going to differ because the you tell has it ever happened it happened with me we have we have done the confessions but while doing the confessions also our mind has gone somewhere else happened for jesus so many times it has happened with me i have to stop and say because now if i go on doing confession then what's the point my mind is not yet rest right both have to go together when we are bound in thanksgiving our mind has to be stayed on god our mind has to be stayed on god hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus that's a sign that we are abounding in faith in faith but if our mind is going somewhere else getting into worry um getting into thinking why is it why is it not happening when is it going to happen 
what am i supposed to do more why is there a delay that's a sign that there is that doubt we are believing but at the same time there is doubt also but at the same time there is an unbelief also hallelujah thank you jesus and that comes from what we are considering all the time what we are considering all the time how does the renewal of the mind happen by what we meditate on constantly what we consider constantly so but the, when i say consider it means pondering all the time uh, it means uh, meditating on something all the time because if you are if you are considering something in our mind yes okay let's say uh, mr i come and tell you uh, you are a business woman right so i come and tell you i have a very good business idea we you and i should uh, become partners and we'll start this new business and this is how we are going to uh, operate this is how we are going to attract clients and this is what we are going to sell and this and that i come and she says okay i will consider what you have said i will consider your proposal when she says i will consider what is she indicating to me that she think about it when she tells me that she consider it it means that she will think about what i have just told her and that thinking is not just surface level that thinking is deep thinking that is happening she is actually taking my words and going over it again and again and again evaluating i said so and so this is the business idea this is the uh, plan for marketing this is the plan for getting customers these are the products she's thinking about it again and again and again what is she doing she is meditating on it she is pondering on it when she when she said to me i will consider it this is what she is doing she is doing deep thinking on what i have said to her our, for our mind to be stayed on god for our mind to be renewed according to the word that comes based on what we consider now even at this moment we can ask a question to ourselves what have i been considering i have been believing that uh, i have been believing believing a certain promise but in my mind what have, what have i been considering what have i been thinking about what have i been pondering because whatever we consider it uh, it creates an imagination in our mind isn't it what we keep thinking about it creates an imagination in our mind it creates a certain picture in our mind yes or no hey jesus now um our mind uh, is where the actual conception of the promise takes place in our imagination um if we have to see for for a birth to happen there has to be a seed but that seed has to be conceived right the seed has to be conceived that conception of that promise the promise is the seed the word of god is the seed the conception of that seed happens in our imagination in our imagination if we take the example of abraham only before abraham actually saw the conception in the physical he had to actually believe that word that seed in his mind first that means he had to conceive that seed first in his mind before he actually saw the conception in the physical he had to see that conception in his mind that means he had to imagine himself as the father of many nations even before he saw the actual conception in his wife's womb he had to first imagine himself as the father of many nations that's why god taught him god not directed him to count the stars count the grains of sand why was he doing that why did god ask him to change his name so that in his mind in his imagination in the first place he starts seeing himself as the father of many nations he he had received the seed of god's word but that seed had to be planted and a conception had to take place based on that seed where before the conception happened in the physical womb of his wife that conception had to happen in his imagination he had to see himself it's the same with us also we have the promise of god we have the, we have received the seed but a conception has to take place in our imagination first where we start seeing ourselves where we start seeing the end result of what the promise uh, of the, the end result of the promise that has been given to us earlier i was talking about um, 
um, me confessing the word again and again repeatedly the whole day. When I did that, a conception was taking place in my own imagination where earlier I was seeing myself as sick, just the way Abraham saw himself as childless before. When he st- uh, when when the conception happened in his imagination, he started seeing himself as the father of many nations. Now also, I was seeing myself as sick all the time. Now, according to the word, when I received that seed of his promise, that by your wounds, by Jesus' wounds, I am already healed. That conception had to happen first in my imagination. Therefore, I had to see myself healed first. If, even before I saw it in the physical, I had to see it in my imagination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We had to see the end result first. Even before we see it in the physical, we had to see the end result in our imagination. Because without imagination, the action does not come. Without first thinking about it, the action does not come. We focus on the action a lot of times. Where we change our actions, but the thinking has not changed. That's why even though we confess, thank you, Jesus, for fulfilling this promise, our thinking has not changed. That's why our words and our thinking do not, does not matter. That's when the question comes. We are confessing, but why are we still not seeing the manifestation? of it? Because in our mind itself, we have not seen the, con- uh, seen the conception happening. In our mind itself, in, in our imagination itself, we have not seen the promise being fulfilled. That's the process of renewing, renewing our mind that we have to go through. It does not happen in one day. Suddenly, tomorrow we are not going to get up and say our mind is completely renewed. No, it has to happen every day. We have to go through that training. We have to go through that training. We have to be consistent. It's a good thing. I, I, I appreciate that thing about uh, all of you because I can see that consistency. I can see you coming consistently and I'm, I'm sure I don't have to come and inquire about whether you actually listen to the word or no because I can see that you surely listen to the word, surely uh, study the word, surely read the Bible, surely pray, uh, are developing that relationship with God once you are out of this place also. I can see that. That's when the actual renewal of the mind happens, where our thinking also starts matching the word of God. It's easy to match our words with the word of God. But even though we speak the words, our thinking might still be the old thinking. Even though we speak the words, we we see we come across so many people. You yourself would have come across so many people who speak all the right words. But in their thinking, it's still the old thinking. It's still the thinking according to the word of God. It's still the thinking of defeat. It's still the thinking of death. It's still the thinking of sickness. Of all the symptoms. When we speak to them, the, the, the words are correct. If you ask them, now this, uh, this has also become a formula where um, everybody has by hearted 1 Peter 2 24. If you say, will, will God heal you? They, they know the answer. They will say, no, God has already healed me. But do they actually see themselves as healed? No. That's where the gap comes. Because the mind is not changed. The words are changed, but the mind has not changed. We have to ask ourselves, are we in this, uh, uh, this, uh, in this spot in any area of our life? It could be. Our mind could be renewed regarding healing. But regarding our finances, probably we are still driven by what we see in the natural. It could be. That's not a bad thing. That's an indication that that is where we have to renew our mind according to the word of God. If we fail over there, it does not mean we run away from God. We run to God. We run to God. When David failed, he did not run away from God. He ran to God and said, God, I made a mistake, but don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. He ran to God. When Moses made a mistake, he did not run away from God. He ran to God. Hallelujah. Praise yes, Jesus. Peter made a mistake, but he did not run away from God. He ran to God. Judas made a mistake. He ran away from God. And he saw a very different end. When we make a mistake, so our God is not going to punish us. He's not interested in punishing us. He's not interested in punishing us. 
If he was interested in punishing us, no, he wouldn't send his son to die on the cross for us. What's the point? If we still have to uh, bear the punishment, what's the point of Jesus coming and dying on the cross? The very the, the, the very death of Jesus on the cross is all the punishment for all our sins. God is saying punishment is already borne by him. I'm not interested in punishing you anymore. You don't have the pay, to pay the price anymore. Jesus already paid the price on our behalf. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. No, no. That's also that's what the word also says. Can you? I don't know where that scripture is. Can you find that scripture? Um, just because you have grace now does not mean you go on sinning. Grace abounding in every good work. See, just because God has forgiven us does not mean we go on sinning now. <laughs> That will be misusing grace. God has not given us His grace and His forgiveness so that we live a life the way we want. No, that's not His purpose of forgiving us. He has given us grace so that with that grace, with His grace, we may now, so yeah, so that now we abound in all good works, meaning we start living a life that the kind of life, the life that He wants us to live not the life that we want to live we, live, we, we want to live a life uh, of complete lust and sin but God did not forgive God did not forgive us so that we can go on sinning no Romans 6 Romans 6 1 and 2 what shall we say to all this should we continue in sin and practice sin as a habit so that God's gift of grace may increase and overflow? Certainly not. How can we, the very ones who died to sin, continue to live in it any longer? Or are you ignorant of the fact, verse 3, or are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We have therefore been buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory and power of the Father, we too might walk habitually in newness of life, abandoning our old ways. Why was grace uh, made to abound, made to overflow and increase? Uh, the verse 1 says, Shall we, uh, should we continue in sin and practice sin as a habit so that God's grace may increase and overflow? No, the Bible says certainly not, surely not. What is the purpose of all this? The purpose of all this is there in verse 4 which says, So that we too might walk habitually in the newness of life. Newness of life is not simply our life right now. It's Jesus' life. By His example that we are called to live. We are called to be His images. Jesus' is images. Jesus' is representatives. The Bible calls His representatives. The Bible calls ambassadors of Christ. That means today, the life that we live, this new life that we live, we live representing God. Imitating Jesus Christ. Uh, Ephesians 5.1, I think, it asked us to imitate Christ, imitate God. That's why grace is made, that's why grace is given to us, not to continue sinning, but to live a new life, to live habitually, to walk habitually in newness of life, abandoning our old ways. Because this new life that we have to live, can we be ambassadors of Christ with our own ability? Can we imitate Christ, live a life imitating Christ with our own ability? No, that is the very reason that grace is given to us. What is grace? God using His ability, His power on our behalf, even though we do not deserve it. It's His unmerited favor in our life. Why? So that now with His grace, we can actually live the life that He wants. Earlier we could not. In our ability, in our natural ability, we could not live a life that He wants us to live. Because His standard was that. Now with His grace, we can 
imitate him and live a life as his representatives as his um, ambassadors doing the same things that he did can we do the same things that jesus did uh, with our own ability can we raise the dead with our own ability can we heal the sick with our own ability can we cast out demons with our own ability Amen. we do it yes correct you yourself are giving the answer please jesus in the name of jesus if you are going out in the name of jesus who are you representing representing when you are um, going out stepping out in the name of jesus you are stepping out as a representative of jesus as an ambassador of christ with the ability to do the same things that he did and even greater things we have not yet tapped into i don't think we have tapped into even 1% of what jesus did forget about doing greater things i don't think we have tapped into 1% of what jesus did on the on the on on the earth as he was leaving but surely we are called to experience that surely we are called to do things just as jesus did even greater things that comes how with the renewing of the mind be you transformed by the renewing of your mind with our natural abilities it's impossible for us to do what jesus did. yet with his grace the more we renew our mind according to his word his grace allows us to be his representatives our natural senses our natural mind is going to tell us it's impossible it's impossible a person is dead is dead we can't raise him from the dead yet we have so many people who have raised their own sons their own daughters people they have ministered to they have raised them from the dead how was it possible with their own ability they had the magic uh, uh, potion or something like that no it was the grace of god operating through them operating through their faith hallelujah praise jesus thank you jesus when we are bound in faith our first of all our mind will be stayed on god because now it is renewed according to the word of god and we will abound in thanksgiving where our imagination also will be based on the word of god not just our words but our imagination also where they saw things happening through god's lens if we take the case of uh, joseph joseph when he was a teenager he was by his by his own brothers he was sold uh, as a slave why was he so just before being sold as a slave he had received a dream from god uh, that he would be promoted to a position where his own family his father mother and his brothers will all be bowing down will all be bowing down to him that created jealousy among his brothers and they sold him as a slave and after being sold as a slave it looked like he is going in the completely opposite direction god showed him in his dream that he will be promoted but now he is going from um, his father's house to being a slave from being a slave uh, to a prisoner he is going in the opposite direction yet where is his mind stayed his mind is constantly stayed on the promise on the on the dream that he had received from god never never is he focusing on where am i what am i doing over here god you promised me to promote me but now i'm in a dungeon what when am i going to be promoted how is it going to happen why has it not happened yet do we see joseph asking any of those questions no yet even in that even though for his natural mind it might look like he's going through a demotion instead of a promotion with false accusations coming against him years going by in the prison with no sign of being released even in that he still focused on god is faithful to his word god is faithful to his word and if god has given me this dream surely god is faithful to fulfill that dream god is surely faithful to fulfill that dream where is his natural was he driven by what he saw in his natural no he kept on believing he kept on believing he believed 
that whatever dream he had that would come to pass but at the same time he did not allow any kind of unbelief to come to enter into his mind when by looking at the circumstances around him he also had to go through that training imagine after the, um getting the dream the very next month he is promoted to a governor would he be able to handle that responsibility impossible he would not be able to handle that pressure he would mess things up he had to learn to rely on god he had to learn to train his senses to um, to go by what god says and that's the sign of a uh, spiritually mature person what is uh, what is that's another uh, uh, word that we keep hearing spiritual maturity what is spiritual maturity i'm not challenging you huh? i'm not pointing fingers also at anybody but we keep hearing these words again and again and again but it's important we know the meaning of these words what is spiritual maturity no that takes it is evolved in the word okay no not exactly what is spiritual maturity Holiness. Spiritual maturity is holiness, no? Yes. Making your spirit strong, no? Not the same knowledge. Walking in the spirit. What does that mean? Believing in the word, no? Okay, we yeah, we get that answer in Hebrews five fourteen. In Hebrews five fourteen, um, it's a continuation of the previous verses, but I'll only read fourteen. Uh, it says, "Solid food is for the spiritually mature, whose senses are trained by practice." to distinguish between what is good and what is evil whose senses are trained to distinguish between spiritually mature is someone whose senses are trained by practice to distinguish between what is good and what is evil now here we have to understand what is good and what is evil what is good and what is evil good simple words good is what is according to the word of god evil is anything that goes against the word of god simple if we go by our own definitions what is good to you might be evil to me or what is okay um yeah i'll get to that so what is good is what you think is good i might find it evil what i think is good you might find it evil we don't go by our own definitions we go by the definition of the word anything that aligns with the word of god is good um and anything uh, which contradicts the word of god is an evil report we we have an example of that in 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 numbers when the when the israelites brought an evil report of the land um Now that report to the natural mind it made perfect sense. There are giants over there. We cannot enter the promised land because we cannot fight those giants. Naturally, it made sense, but the Bible calls it an evil report because it went against the word of God. It went against the word of God. So that's an evil report. So by a spiritually mature person is someone who who senses. are trained by practice everybody had to train their senses by practice to distinguish between what is good and what is evil with a natural mind things might have made perfect sense when they saw the sea in front of them not being able to cross with a natural mind it might have made sense to uh, uh, complain think why have you, there is no way to go forward why have you brought us here put put us in this corner so that uh, so that we can be killed by the egyptian army to the israel as a natural mind it might have made perfect sense but that was an evil word out of their mouth because they are they were speaking by their senses 
which went they were speaking something by their senses which went against the word of god which went against the word of god all of them had to go through that thing moses saw the same thing but he did not go by his senses he had trained his senses to distinguish between what is good and evil he saw what is good and the good is god's instruction that he had to obey he saw that as good he had trained his senses to see that as good joseph he saw that as good he saw he saw the word of god as good what is happening around him he was not bothered by that he he did not he was not bothered by what his senses were telling him but he had trained his senses to only see to distinguish between what is good and evil and the good being what is based on the word of god hallelujah hallelujah praise jesus thank you jesus so the 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 battle is in our mind you were fighting battle in your mind but when you when you shifted your focus from from what is happening in the world from all the problems troubling you to the word of god your mind you trained your mind to stay on the word of god then you started experiencing that peace yes then as you grew in uh, as you as you established your faith as you stood firm in your faith you started a bonding in thanksgiving keeping away that unbelief that could have hindered your faith hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus so let's take this home where we ask ourselves we ask ourselves is there an area where i might be having faith i might be believing but is there any kind of unbelief that is hindering me any any thinking based on my senses based on my own way of thinking based on my own understanding uh, based on my rational that is hindering me from experiencing the the life that god wants me to experience but that's us also there and surely the lord will reveal to us those areas and not just reveal to us those areas but also teach us how we overcome that that's his grace for us hallelujah, hallelujah. shall we do that praise jesus